Good evening, Democrats. Good evening, Democrats. Oh, yay, much better. Thank you. Welcome to the November 3rd meeting of the Lowndes County Democratic Party. Our meeting this evening is going to be brief. So if you would please um, stand, we'll have a moment of silence, and then we'll have the pledge. Thank you very much. I say it every time, I mean it every time. With liberty and justice for all, it's one of the greatest things about our country is that we have the opportunity for everybody to have the same treatment. Whether you're young or old, black or white, gay or straight, married or not, have kids or no, a grandma, grandpa, everybody gets to have the same opportunities, the same treatment. It's really awesome. When you came in, you should have gotten an agenda a copy of last month's minutes, and a membership form. If you haven't paid your membership for 2014, it's not too late. Um, we take memberships all year long. It's not just kind of a January thing. You can pay up your dues anytime. And uh, if you want to pay your 2015 dues in advance, we'll take those two, just cross out 14, and type in 15 there, and you can always make a donation. Are there any corrections to the minutes from October? If there are no corrections, I will accept a motion to accept them. Motion to accept. Do I have a second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Wonderful. Um, Jim Parker, could you give us our financial report, please? Okay, we started the month with a balance of $200.63, ended the month with $494.49, and want to thank everyone for that gave this past month, appreciate it, and know that you've been uh, trying to help the candidates along too, but uh, please remember us before the end of the year, okay? Your party needs you, and we still have a few things to cover, and uh, appreciate anything by the end of the year. Thank you. Yeah, we do um, appreciate all the support that everybody's given to the candidates directly. I know that a lot of people have made donations. Um, the, the county party needs your donation too. We need to pay the rent every month and we've been very busy over there. So we are needing to pay our rent um, in a timely fashion. So please give us any that you can beyond what you already have. Um, we don't have any elected officials in the audience this evening. Um, but I imagine that they're all either out campaigning or helping others to campaign. So we will move immediately to officers' reports. Dr. Marks, do you have an elections report for us? Do I have an elections report? We've got an election tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> so everybody needs to get to, get to work. Uh, we're divvied up the jobs, so it's not hard for anybody to help in lots of lots of ways. Uh, first of all, the slate cards, please make sure that you get some slate cards, get these into the hands of voters who have not yet voted, and make sure they take them to the polls and then pass them along to somebody, somebody else. It's important that <clears throat> we encourage voters to vote all the way from the top of the ticket, Michelle Nunn and Jason Carter, uh, all the way down uh, for State Senate Bikram Mohani, uh, for our uh, state representatives and for our county commissioners, uh, Tom Hulkshield and Demarcus Marshall. Uh, I have been hearing some good things uh, from my Republican friends, I do have some, uh, who are very, very impressed by Bikram Mohanty, and I think that may be the surprise of tomorrow's election. <clears throat> uh, the other one uh, that I think we really need, uh, need to be plugging is Valerie Wilson for state school superintendent. Uh, she is in favor of 
supporting the public schools. Her opponent is a Tea Party guy who is in favor of dismantling the public schools. So that's a very important election. <clears throat> We're going to have folks uh, providing rides to the polls. Uh, Wynne Roberson is coordinating uh, that effort. Uh, if you are available to be a driver, <clears throat> please call Wynne. His telephone number is 630-2339. Uh, the party office will be open all day uh, tomorrow, uh, 7 to 7. To 7. Uh, Helen Rosebury is going to be uh, manning the office. Uh, stop by the office, uh, answer the phones, uh, help uh, with rides to the polls. Call people who have not yet gone to the polls. Uh, Laverne Gaskins is coordinating the, the calling. Uh, we're calling this evening uh, at, the, at the office. Uh, till um, started at five. We'll continue that continue that this evening. Uh, so if you're free after the meeting, uh, please head over to the office at 1008 Slater Street. Uh, make some of those some of those calls. <coughs> um, and then the other thing that you can that you can do uh, besides talking to voters, calling voters, assisting with rides to the with rides to the polls. Please call up everybody you know. Tell them this is important to vote. The early voting has gone extremely well. The numbers in this year up above the uh, level in 2010. Uh, the early voting has been 33% African American, a very good sign. Let's, <coughs> let's continue to get out the vote. I think that we have won the early voting. But the question is, can we continue the momentum tomorrow and win the election tomorrow? So please get as many people as you can to the polls tomorrow. Get them to, get them to vote. Uh, this is a very important election. This is the election which starts turning Georgia blue. So please help every way you can. If you want to help with rides to the polls, if you want to help with calling, uh, please, please see me or call uh, Wynn uh, or uh, email Laverne and get over to the office tomorrow and help every way you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. Um, actually, I, I came prepared this evening. Um, I'm gonna tell you a, a little project that we've been working on. Um, in an effort to turn out voters who didn't vote in 2010, we used Vote Builder to identify voters who voted in 2008 and 2012, but not 2010. And those are the people that we mailed the slate cards to. There were 2,157 2 of them. The cards got some of them to go to vote. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I sent a robocall, um, I sent a robocall encouraging them to vote, and the ones that hadn't voted yet. Uh, to the ones that had home phones, and that was about 1,800 of them. And then we had 141 of them had voted. And then last week, Dexter sent a robocall to those same people, um, and by Friday we had 259 of them had voted. So we've turned out 259 people who didn't vote in 2010 of the 2,000 that we had targeted. Um, I have here the phone numbers that... You could just take some of these home and call them personally tonight or call them tomorrow and ask them if they need a ride or do they need uh, help getting to the poll? Do they know where they vote? The two precincts that I've picked out here, I, I have about, I don't know, 600 of them, are Northside Baptist Gym and Mildred Hunter. These are all people that are on our team. Every call you make off of this list will be a friendly voter, somebody that maybe needs our help and encouragement in getting to the polls. So you don't have to call Laverne, you can just take a handful of sheets of paper home with you tonight, call these folks before 8.30 tonight or call them tomorrow. If they need a ride when you're talking to them, then just, their address is on here, then just call up Wynn and say, this person needs a ride and he'll get somebody over to them. Um, I really appreciate all of the hard work that people have been doing in terms of calling um, and driving people to the polls already. Um, and, and donating, uh, Dexter paid for the robocall that went out in his voice today. So, so every donation helps 
Nothing that we do is free. Every one of those robocalls costs money. Every phone that we use costs money, and I appreciate the donations that people have been making. Um, like Dr. Mark said, the early vote here has been good. Um, the Sunday voting um, was very good. We had more than 300 people vote on Sunday, 200 on Saturday. And I too have a, a, quite a lot of Republican friends and when one of them, uh, some of them were saying to me, well, why do we have to vote on the weekend? I said, well, because for 500 people, that probably was the only time they could get to the polls. They don't get, you know, a one hour lunch where they can leave their work, drive somewhere, either on, on election day to their precinct or to the early vote place. It's just not an option for them. So for 500 people, that weekend voting made a really big difference. I promised it would be a short meeting. Um, members to be heard, does anybody have anything important to talk about? Jim Parker, Rob, Glenn, oh, Glenn. I, I'm sorry, I've skipped over one of our important officers. We have a membership chair now. Uh, Glenn Ritchie, please come talk to us about membership. Good evening, everybody. Um, well, as far as regarding membership, what I've been doing is um, calling our, our actual members and reminding them about the dues and also trying to raise up some of the money. We've had uh, a little bit of money has been donated uh, to help with the robocalls and the slate cards and um, even though the election day is tomorrow I mean any time after that is okay to still donate to your local Democratic Party and also make sure your dues are kept up to date it's not a lifetime membership so you always want to renew it um, every time you go around and as far as uh, voting one of the things that uh, Jason Carter brought up when he came to Valdosta and I'm going to have that updated on the website as soon as I can figure out how to get it off my phone and put it up there, um, the video of it. He said, get somebody or two people to go to the polls tomorrow. Um, you, I'm, everybody here has probably already voted. Am I correct? Has everybody voted early? So, okay. Um, so your responsibility at this point would be to get somebody to the polls. So think about that person, who it's going to be. Who are you going to encourage or or drag or whatever you need to do to get them up there. Um, I thought one of the people that I'm going to try to get up there is um, is actually my fiance. She's notorious for missing elections. And so um, I said, well, how am I going to get her to make sure she goes up there? And I said, well, you know what? We're going to go eat breakfast tomorrow. And then we're going to swing by. <laughs> we're going to swing. Oh, look, honey, there's the election polling place. Um, uh, you haven't voted yet, have you? Uh, maybe we should stop by. So. Think about that person. If you have to con them or whatever you need to do to get them to go there, as long as they're up there and they're voting, and, and that's what's the main thing uh, is we need to turn out because that's the only way we're going to win is by getting people to turn out for the elections. And um, That's pretty much it. If you're not too sure about your status with membership, I can check up on you. You can uh, contact me and I can look that up for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have the membership chair. Thank you, Glenn. Lou. Would you remind people if at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Lord willing, and they are still in the line, do not get out of the line. Do not get out of the line. Lou is reminding us that at 7 o'clock tomorrow, if someone uh, that's you or someone you know is in the line to vote, they should not get out of the line. They should stay in the line because if they are in the line at 7 o'clock, they are permitted to vote. They will cut off and say, you're the last person in the line, nobody can get behind you, but they should stay in the line and persist in voting. Um, that does, in some of the precincts, get to be an issue because they have a lot of voters and people go after work. Um, for those of you who are our poll watchers, the times of the days that we, we really need you, if you can't just go there and you know spend the whole day sitting around, is the first morning little bit before people go to work, the lunch hour, and five till seven. We need to have the polls you know, attended at those times to make sure that people aren't being turned away. Um, if they've gone to the wrong precinct, we want to try to get them to the correct precinct so that we don't give them a provisional ballot. We want to have them count on the first round. Yes, Dennis. Every precinct will have ballots for every other precinct. Sorry, oh, how 
awesome is that? Every precinct will have ballots for all the other precincts starting tomorrow. So if they look up and they're supposed, they, they went to Northside Baptist Gym and they're supposed to vote at Trinity, they can just vote their correct ballot at Northside. Oh, yay. Okay, no driving people around. Last time I spent a lot of time picking up people from one precinct and driving them to another. Um, I will also let you know that um, there's, w the Democratic Party has not been happy about the fact that we're down to only nine precincts. It's very hard for people to get to their precinct um, because some of them are now far away from where they live. And we have gone uh, many times to the Board of Elections and said we think that there are too few precincts. We are going to make a concerted effort um, after this election to get more precincts. Um, and we believe that we will have cooperation from the Republican Party, that they also want more precincts. Um, they, they're, they're seeing that maybe people aren't able to get to the polls the way that they wish also. And our goal isn't just that our team votes, our goal is that everyone has the opportunity to cast a ballot. Um, so we're gonna be working on that to try to figure out what we can do, where, the, where precincts need to be so that they're more convenient for people. Um, we have upcoming, uh, tomorrow is election day. We'll have a regular meeting on December the 1st. There may be a runoff in a local, uh, st are the state ones at the, on the f December? If there's a runoff at the state level, it's in December. If there's a runoff at the federal level, it's in January. So we could be faced with um, having to get our voters out again in December and January if there are runoffs, if we don't have an outright winner tomorrow. That's another reason why it's so important that people go now, because getting them to go in December and in January could be awful. So get them to go tomorrow. Um, the other thing that we have upcoming is the MLK dinner is going to be January the 3rd. I have the tickets for our table here tonight if you would like to buy one. The Democratic Party um, generally gets a table at that event. The tickets are $25 if you'd like to purchase one. And I have them here tonight. So you can write the party a check for $25 and I will give you a ticket. Our next, our meeting in January will be January the 5th, which would be the day immediately before that runoff day. Is that the right day? Would, be January 6th. I'm really hoping that we don't have that happen to us. But that's sort of, mark your calendars now. No, the, the December runoff is December the 6th. Second. The January runoff is later. Is later? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> I, I just, it, I hope we don't have to have that. I hope we can just win, have a winner tomorrow. And we would like the winner to be on our team. That's why you need to get some of these, call these people, and get them to go and vote. And, and, and you know, maybe they haven't gone because they don't have a ride. And, and then we need to ask them, is it because you don't have a ride that you, you need, need help getting there? And, and then we'll help them get there. Um, is there anything else I've forgotten? Yeah, committee, committee meeting in December to the White House. Yes, oh, uh, yes, important. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to you. Um, We will have a committee meeting. So if you are a committee member, we will elect officers um, at a meeting in December. I don't know when that'll be. Probably it'll be right before the regular meeting, but because um, that's convenient time, we can just meet. Oh, so um, the officers that we have, uh, we have a chairman, that's the job that I do right now, a vice chair for elections, that's the job that Dennis does, a vice chair for membership, that's what Glenn does, the treasurer, that's what Jim does. The secretary, that's what Jarrell does. And the vice chair for qualifying, that's what Dr. Sager does. So those are the positions that we need to fill up with people who would like to do some one of those jobs, some committee members. So um, the other thing is, starting in January, we will have a new venue. We don't know what the venue will be yet, but we will not be meeting here anymore. Um, this, this building is going to undergo some transformation, and um, so we're, we're going to look for a new place. So if you know a new place um, to meet, and the other thing that we're going to consider is perhaps meeting on a different day. So if you have a preference for a different day, 
a different time. Um, people often suggest, couldn't we meet on a Saturday morning? That's not my favorite, but um, if, if the group as a overall prefers to meet on a Saturday morning, we will consider that. We'll consider all the different options. So we'll do that also at the December meeting um, to find, identify new location options and new location times, uh, new meeting times. So, yes, Ms. Green. Yes, that's the Martin Luther King uh, Founders Dinner. It's um, held at the Rainwater Conference Center, and they have always a wonderful speaker. And did it say on the ticket who their speaker is this year? I don't know who the speaker is. They always have somebody really wonderful. Hmm. Leroy Butler. Uh, so. It's always fun, it's dress up, it's socialize. Um, one year we had a picture of all the people that sat at our table taken together with uh, Sonny Vickers when he was just still the mayor or just done being the mayor. It, it's, a, it's a really great picture and it was totally fun. Uh, January the 3rd, that's a Saturday night. It's at six o'clock. So please, please do consider sitting with us, it's fun. Is there anything else? Okay. Please either take some of these names home with you or go immediately to the office and help Laverne. She's there right now calling. I know that because when I left, she was there. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this very brief meeting. Okay. And we're done. Thank you.
this hat. Okay. Okay.